Hey guys, Dr. Brown again with Kubo Math coming to you from Tarlock City, Philippines. And tonight we have Algebra 1, Adding and Subtracting Fractions. Wow, your hair may come on fire. No, nope, don't run. It's all simple. It's all about common denominators. So let's get after it. Okay, let's look at this fraction here. 1 over 7 plus 5 over 7. I think I'll use this as my workspace. So 1 over 7 plus 5 over 7. We could say that is 1 7 times 1 plus 1 7 times 5. We could say that. Then we could say, well, let me factor out the 1 7 so that's 1 7 times 1 plus 5. Well, 1 plus 5 is 6, and that's 6 times 1 7, which is 6 over 7. That seems to be like reaching around the back of your head to scratch your elbow. <laughs> okay, there's, there's got to be an easier way, and there is. You'll notice there's a 7 underneath each of those. They call that, well that's a common denominator. You remember what's in the top is the numerator, what's in the bottom is the denominator. So the denominators are the same, so they would say, oh it's a common denominator. So if that's the case, I can put that down one time and then put 1 plus 5 you know, the values that are in the numerator of this one, plus, and it, plus or minus, if it were minus, then you would put minus. So, but in this case, 1 plus 5 equals 6 over 7, which is the same as what we had here, but it's easier to do. So the key was a common denominator. Okay? What about this next one here? Given what we just learned, we have a 7 underneath each of them. So now I have that common denominator. And now 5 minus 1, which is 4 over 7. Okay. What about this guy? They're both over 6. So now I have 5 plus 7, let me move this one over here, 5 plus 6 plus 7 over 6. So I have everything over 6, it's my common denominator. 5 plus 7, well that equals 12 over 6. Oh, well, you can immediately see since 6 will go into 12, we can rewrite 12 as 2 times 6, and that's divided by 6. So now, I have 6 over 6. What's 6 divided by 6? 1. If you say 0, I'm coming to your house. Okay, 1 times 2 equals 2. So this, common denominator, add them together, it gave me something that I could immediately see 12 was a multiple of 6. You know, it, it was a, you could divide that into this. So I factored the numerator and then to see if I could reduce it somehow. Okay. Com this one had common denominator and reduction. Okay, so that one turned out to be 2. What about this one? 12 over 27 plus 11 over 27. Oh, so my common denominator is this 27. So 12 plus 11, so that's 23 over 27. 23 is a prime number, so no reduction I can do there. 23 over 27. So this was 4 over 7. I'll clean this up a little bit. 
Okay, what about these guys up here? Now let's subtract one. Well, what's the common denominator? 49. So 49, 24 minus 11 would be 13. 13 is a prime number also, and I can't reduce. And prime means 1 times 13. There's no other multiples beside that number times 1. Now, there's nothing else I can divide into that and reduce like I did the 12 earlier. This one, okay, I have 16 is my common multiple. Common denominator, sorry. Common denominator. 21 minus 15 is 6. Oh, now you can see, you know immediately 2 will go into each of these. So let's rewrite the 6 as 2 times 3. 16, let's write it as 2 times 8. These 2's, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And it leaves me with the fraction 3 over 8. So this one reduces to 3 over 8. Okay. Now up until this point, we've had the same denominator. Remember, we're trying to get a common denominator. Oh, 2 over 3 plus 7 over 12. I would hope that all of you know your multiplication tables just like that. If you don't, study them. You need to learn all 100 entries and have them fixed in your mind, 0 through 10, 0 through 10, all the multiples. Because when you start doing fractions, you need to be able to understand immediately, well, 3 will go into 12 how many times? 4 times 3 is 12. So if I'm trying to get a common multiple with this, well, since I need 12 as my common, multi or common denominator, sorry, common denominator, 3 will go into 12 4 times. So if I had 4 times 3, it's 12. But I can't just multiply that by the denominator, but I can multiply it by the numerator. 4 over 4 is what? It's 1. So all I've done is multiplied this 2 over 3 by 1. I haven't changed anything. So what does that give me? 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. So now I have 8 over 12 plus 7 over 12. 8 plus 7 over 12. Okay. So that gives me 15 over 12. Oh, well, I can immediately see that 3 will go into both of those. Again, multiplication tables. So what does this mean? Uh, 3 times 5 divided by 3 times 4. 3 divided by 3, cancel. I'm left with the fraction 5 over 4. So this one reduced down to 5 over 4. Okay, what about this one? You can go with this in a, in a different way. Let's see, let me get over here. 5 divided by 8 minus 5 over 12. You could say, well, 8, 16, 24, 32, that's the different multiples of 8. You could say 12, 24, 36, ah, oh, wait, here we go. 24 is a common denominator that we could establish with this. So let's do that. Let's pick 24. Okay, let's just keep it on both sides for the moment. 8 goes into 24 how many times? 3. So I need to multiply this side by 3 over 3. And multiply that. 12 goes into 24 two times. So I need to multiply this one by 2 over 2. So now I have 24 in each, and it's subtracting. 
3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 8, 24. 5 times 2 is 10. Two, 12 times 2, 24. So now I have that 15 minus 10, or 15 over 24, minus 10 over 24. If we combine those into a common denominator, now it's 15 minus 10, which gives me 5. Let's get it back over here. 5 over 24. 5 is a prime number. I can't, 1 times 5 is its only uh, multipliers or only factors. So 5 over 24 would be the answer for that one. Okay. Hey, we are rolling here. Doing a good job. Hopefully everyone's been studying. Study, study, study. All right, I'll bring this one down here. 5 over 9 plus 8 over 3. Hmm, okay. 3 will go into 9 three times. So I need to multiply by 3 over 3. Okay. 5 over 9 plus 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 3 is 9. So I have 5 plus 24 all over 9. So that gives me 29 over 9. And 29 is an odd, <laughs> it's a prime number also. Okay. Is 29 over 9. Okay, last one. Unless we make up a few. All right, we have, oh, this one's a little different. Okay, five, let's go with the multiples. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Now we got six, 12, 18, 24, 30. Ah, right, here we go, 30. 30 is the deal. Okay, so 30 and 30. Five goes into 30 how many times? Six. Six over six is what I multiply that side by to get my 30. Six goes into 30 how many times? Five. So I have to multiply this one by five over five. So I multiplied each side times one. Six times four is 24. Six times five is my 30. Five times five is 25. Six times five is 30. So now I have the common denominator of 30. So that gives me, what, 49 over 30. Let's see, 49, seven times seven, six times five, that's the best we can do. Yeah, 19, yep, yeah. so 49 over 30. I thought that might reduce, but no. So that would be 4 fifths plus 5 sixths equals 49 over 30. Okay, this was uh, a good, good exercise in adding and subtracting fractions. And it all comes down to getting a common denominator. And you can see how you can develop a list of multiples and then pick out, oh, here's, here's what I need because that came up. And then determine how many times that particular denominator goes into that. And in this case, 30 was 5 over 5. So it went in there 5 times. So that becomes your fraction or your number one that you're going to multiply that by. In this case, this one went six times, so I can multiply it by one, which was six over six. So it's not difficult to do. It may, it's, sometimes in the beginning when you first see it, it appears to be a little different. But if you just keep working them, understand the rules, 
common denominator, how to get that common denominator, and then when you already have a common denominator, how to put those together. In this case, we had to reduce, so how to reduce just becomes factoring, knowing your multiplication tables. So uh, keep working, keep practicing, and together let's build a better tomorrow. Keep studying, 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 okay guys? And then uh, I guess that's it for tonight, and then we'll see you soon uh, next time. Have a great evening. Thanks.